When building ETL processes, you find yourself very often needing to find uniqueness in your data. There are many reasons for that. A few of them could be where you need to find only the data that has changed in your source, or you're just looking to deduplicate data within your rows of data. Data flows in ADF and in Synapse Analytics provide some convenient ways to do that. And I want to talk to you about a few of those techniques here today. So before I explain to you these different streams that I have on my canvas already built, let me zoom out a little bit and start with a brand new one just to show you the basics of how you would do this. So when you have source data, in this case, I'm going to create a source from my movies database which is actually in this case just a CSV file. So a text limited file. I'll show you the projection on this because it's text limited. There is no data type associated with it. That's okay for this purpose. If you want data type from your text limited, you know, your, your uh, tab delimited, your comma separated values, use detect data type and data factory will find the data types and infer those for you. But let's move on to how to uh, find the uniqueness amongst the rows in this data. So what I'll do is I'm going to add a derived column under here, and I'm going to call the column my hash. I have a couple of other my hash columns up above that I'm creating, so I'm going to give this a, a unique name and call it my hash too. And for the expression, let's open up the expression builder. All I have to do is use a hash function here to get a, a fingerprint essentially of your row. Um, now I'm going to use SHA2. Uh, we have others. You could use um, MD5. Um, you could use um, CRC. Let's just use uh, SHA2. So I'm going to say 256 is going to be the bit length for my hash. Then you put the list of columns that you wish to um, that you wish to hash. So I want a fingerprint across the entire row. So instead of selecting each individual column, I have options here. I could manually pick each column, and I could just say, "Give me a fingerprint uh, based on just these three columns." This will give you uniqueness across the movie title and genre because it's going to hash those three columns or if you want all columns so that you don't need to explicitly list them for uh, schema drift purposes you can use the expression function called columns and that'll give you all the columns that are present in the metadata and that way you can get a fingerprint across all the columns no matter what the incoming schema is okay so let's go ahead and refresh that and that's going to give me a, a hash across all the columns, which is going to be, no matter what the value is of the columns coming in, I'm going to get all the columns by using the columns function. Now that's that's fine, that, that works very well. However, what happens then is what you'll find yourself in some situations is needing to select a set of columns that are not necessarily able to be predefined by your data flow because they may change. So one of the ways to do that is through parameters. So let's go ahead and create a new parameter. So I'm going to make this parameter as a string array, and then that string array is going to be an array of the different columns. So I had movie, title, and year were the three columns that I was using for my row fingerprint. All right, I'm going to hash those. Click OK. That's my parameter value now. Is that array? So now what I can do is I can send in every time that I execute this data flow, and I can specify which columns to use to look for uniqueness in my hash. So now I have to just replace columns with a function called by names. This will allow me to put that list and that list is the parameter parameter one, which is an array of the different columns. And so now when I refresh, so I get the hash value for just those three columns. So there's another even more generic use case where you may not even know the columns that you have to name as part of the parameter when you execute this data flow from a pipeline. So in that case, instead of actually naming the columns as part of a parameter to create your hash, you can also create a hash of just a few columns in line in your data flow. It's a little bit of a trick to do that. And I'm going to show you that right here. So let's go up to this top stream for my data flow where this is source one. Again, the movie CSV is coming in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch off. So I have a new branch here. And on this second branch, I'm just going to name this new branch called select columns using a select 
transformation. In that select transformation, I'm going to pick just the three columns that I wish to hash on. So I'm going to say, I just want to hash on your rating of Rotten Tomato. So I'm not able to send these in as a parameter. I want to select just those columns for hashing. What I can do now is because this is a separate stream with just those three columns as part of the metadata, my inspect will show you that incoming is just those three columns. Now I can go into a drive column and just use SHA-256 to bits using the columns function. Again, the columns function is the value for all the columns in that stream at that time. But because this stream only has those three columns, that's all I'm going to be hashing. So then I can join that back right up here. So I have a join that just joins it back on those three columns that I've chosen. This way I know that I'm going to be associating the right hash value with the right row by using the key or essentially the columns that I use for my uniqueness in the select. The second way of doing this is by using a cached lookup. So I have a separate source because the cache sync needs to be a separate stream. This source transformation is the exact same source I'm using up here. And then again, I have my selectivity, just those three columns, exact same code here. This is the SHA-2256 columns function. And then I just drop it into a cache sync, so it puts it into memory. So this is a cache sync. And then under the key columns, under settings, year rating Rotten Tomato again is my key value, essentially my composite key. Now in this drive column up here, I'm going to get that hash value out of the cache by saying, call it my hash one in the expression is going to be cached sync one using the lookup function on those three properties those three keys coming in and this will give me the same exact hash value in fact if i look then at the sync output you will see that i have the hash value for my hash one and my hash doesn't matter how you do it but that's how you can select columns using the columns function to create a hash and a fingerprint for your rows with those different techniques in data flows both in synapse analytics and in data factory all right so thanks for watching